Hello everyone to today's webinar. We appreciate you taking the time joining us for today's session about Equinix and how we enable real-time insights into your co-location assets via Equinix's IBX Smart View AVIs. Um, we do have two speakers today with us. Um, you can see it on the right on your screen. Uh, what we'd like to welcome Michael Martinelli, who is a senior product manager for Equinix IBX SmartView, and Devesh Kumar, who is senior uh, product engineer for interconnection services with focus on IBX SmartView as well. Uh, the agenda on the left, we will go quickly into an overview of Equinix, then we will go into the heart of the content with uh, the IBX SmartView product overview. Uh, the API architectures, key use cases to leverage API for IBX Smart View, uh, and as well as Divesh will walk us through a, several demos how to leverage and use the APIs. We do also have on standby SMEs for your questions, so please take advantage of that functionality and post your questions in the Q&A window. You also will find at the bottom of the screen uh, several resources as well as if you are inclined to do so, please share uh, via social media and connect with us and converse with us. Before we get again started with the main content, let me quickly give a brief overview of Equinix's history. We are celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Um, so we got started in 1998 um, and again, 20 years of a history of records as well as of ongoing innovation. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this slide, uh, but would like to highlight now that we are present in many, many metros. Uh, do have 200 IBX locations worldwide, uh, present on five continents, and again, have a long history of innovation, ongoing growth, and with that, um, I would like to turn it over to Michael in order to walk us through about IBX SmartView. Michael, please take it away. Thank you, Klaus, uh, and thank you, everybody. Uh, so to give a little bit of background as to the uh, APIs that Devesh will spend the rest of this uh, uh, webinar discussing, uh, IBX SmartView is Equinix's data center infrastructure management IOT application, uh, providing Equinix customers with real-time access to environmental and operating information relevant to their critical footprint in our data centers. Uh, IBX SmartView provides Equinix customers with, with relevant and, and real-time trended data views, allowing direct access to operating status and operating data uh, on our critical assets uh, delivering the high availability of power and cooling primarily to our customers and soon um, uh, network uh, elements as well. Uh, IBX SmartView provides unmatched visibility to core infrastructure at the data center, including environmental data from an IBX level down to a cabinet level, power draw data at a circuit level rolled up to cage cabinet levels, uh, and, and real time operating status uh, of the cooling and electrical plants and, and all of the infrastructure assets, again, delivering cooling and power to uh, our customers' critical applications within the data center. Uh, IBX SmartView provides users with the ability to configure real-time push notifications. Uh, these push notifications allow our customers to be proactive during important events uh, at the data center, such as when utility power goes out or temperature spikes in their cage. Uh, enabling our customers to get ahead of these events with as much time as possible is critical to uh, their ability to execute business continuity and, and disaster recovery plans and, and generally to uh, manage the critical assets, so the critical applications that they're co-locating in our data centers. Uh, IBX SmartView also provides users with unlimited on-demand big data reporting. Users can take advantage of this to uh, configure frequently used reports, such as monthly power draw reports, temperature and humidity trending reports, or alarm summary or resiliency summary reports on electrical or mechanical plants. Uh, users can schedule these reports to automatically generate on a schedule, such as daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and when the reports are generated, they're distributed as an email attachment to a distribution that, that the user can configure. So 
a use case here, a power draw report for the past month delivered to me and, and the core people on my team who need to see that uh, can be configured one time and uh, set up to schedule, uh, set up on a schedule to um, generate and recur regularly without having to uh, access the, the system again to um, to pull the report. So kind of a set it and forget it capability with with reports of, of all sorts. Again, power draw is just an example here. Uh, IBX SmartView provides all of the data uh, in a globally consistent single pane of glass manner using uh, a couple of different methods, uh, an online SaaS application that's accessible through our Equinix customer portal, um, or of course, by using RESTful and, and near real-time streaming HPIs, I'm sorry, APIs, which of course are the focus of this webinar and Devesh will spend the rest of the time here talking about. Um, so in short, you know, IBX SmartView allows our customers to, to gain hassle-free instant access to, to data about the operating status of each data center and the environmental status of each data center relevant to your to, to our customers' IBX deployment um, through IBX SmartView. So you're only seeing the information that's relevant to you, that's actionable to you. We're filtering out the noise. Uh, everything that you're seeing in IBX SmartView is important to you and, and potentially uh, uh, speaks to the availability of the data center as it relates to your applications within the data center. Um, Organization-wide access to the system uh, ensures your team has uh, consistent and unified access to all this data um, and all this data being critical to managing applications efficiently, efficiently wherever they're located. Uh, IBX SmartView is currently available in 39 data centers globally. Uh, we are that's, that covers about 30% of our footprint. Um, uh, we're working diligently to bring new data centers online to IBX SmartView each quarter. Um, these are uh, global deployments, right? So this is a global IoT uh, um, installation. Um, and uh, like I say, our goal, uh, I should say, we're bringing data centers online every quarter and our goal is to have 100% coverage um, uh, with DCIM and IBX SmartView very shortly. With, with that said, I'll turn it over to Devesh to uh, go into detail on our APIs. Devesh. Thanks, Mike. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Devesh Kumar. And as introduced earlier, I am the Senior Engineering Manager for the IBX SmartView product. I will take you through the rest of this journey on this, in this webinar talking about IBX SmartView API. So we'll start with talking about IBX SmartView API architecture. The picture on your screen here shows you the logical architecture for IBX SmartView APIs. I will read this picture from bottoms up. DCIM platform that you see right at the very bottom of the logical diagram powers the core IBX SmartView API architecture. DCIM platform or the data center infrastructure monitoring platform comprises of two key components, namely the edge software and our core central data processing layer. We talk about each of these components. Edge software is the software that is installed in our different IBX locations. And it is responsible for connecting to and collecting data from our different uh, asset categories or asset infrastructure in the IBX. At this point in time, we support four broad categories of assets from which we connect and collect data from. They are namely the mechanical assets, the electrical assets, the environmental assets, and the, the power assets. Edge software, besides, the, besides connecting and collecting data, is also responsible for cleansing the data, applying unit of measure conversions, scaling and other consideration, and then pumping the data to our core central platform. Moving on to the second key component of the DCIM platform, which is the core central data processing layer, this layer is responsible for ingesting the data pumped into it by the various edge locations through asynchronous communication channels. And it applies data processing capabilities, which is namely doing further calculations on the data that it receives, doing alarms and alert processing and notifying the users with the alert conditions or alarm conditions triggered on different assets. It's also responsible for data persistence, and data analytics. Moving up onto this API logical architecture, 
it shows you that we have two broad categories of APIs in IBX Smart View, namely the REST APIs that you see on your left-hand side of the screen and the streaming near real-time APIs that are shown on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll talk about both what they are uh, meant to be used for and how we can leverage them. So we'll start with talking about the REST APIs. The REST, IBIC Smart View REST APIs, as you can see on your screen, uh, are responsible for providing you metadata about the assets that either you own in an IBX location, in an Equinix IBX location, or it provides you information about the assets that are owned by Equinix, but are serving your particular deployment at the Equinix IBX locations. It all, the REST APIs also provides you visibility into the different attributes of the assets that are hosted at these locations. What we call the attributes we call as tag points, and that's, what, that's the nomenclature that we'll use in the rest of the webinar. Using IBX Smart View REST APIs, you can also get historical data about a particular asset tag point or asset tag by providing an asset information and the date range for which you want the historical data. Similarly, using rest, uh, alarm REST API, you can get all historical alarms that ever triggered across all your Equinix deployments or a list of alarms that are active at this moment in time. Using alerts REST API, you can get all the alerts that triggered ever triggered across your Equinix deployments and the alerts that are active right now, which are under, which have been triggered but not acknowledged yet. Moving on to the right side of the architecture diagram, which is the streaming near real-time APIs. Streaming near real-time APIs provide users the capability to stream the asset data attributes as they are collected at different IBEX locations onto different asynchronous communication channels. So essentially, they provide you a capability where you can stream the asset attributes as they are being pulled at our different Equinix IBX location and the power attributes as they are being pulled at different Equinix IBX locations to our asynchronous channels. At this point in time, we support private cloud Kafka channel and public cloud Google Pub Sub channel. Ability to support the uh, asynchronous channels of other clouds, such as Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services in the works, is in the works and will be available pretty soon. Besides ability to stream your data through our streaming near real-time APIs on these different asynchronous channels in private and public cloud offerings, we also support or provide the capability to stream this data in machine-native protocols to support use cases where you would want to integrate these feeds directly into your application or into your building management systems. At this point in time, we support SNMP and OPC protocols with more protocol support is coming along the way. Moving on, the last point of this architecture that I want to highlight before we move on further is the ability, IBX Smart View APIs allow, provide the ability to process data in our central core data processing platform, as well as to process and stream data from our local IBX locations. Moving on to the next slide. So the next slide talks about our Equinix Developer Portal platform. Equinix Developer Portal platform is our core platform for all our customer-facing APIs. It provides intuitive, easy to use developer experience using which the developers can explore, subscribe, and connect to Equinix APIs across our product lines, IBX Smart View being one of the products. You can also get a sneak peek into our upcoming beta APIs. Using the playground feature of Equinix Developer Platform, you can test drive your APIs in minutes. We will go into Equinix Developer Platform as we start our use cases demo later during this webinar. This, this particular slide talks about what is your journey like as a developer if you plan to consume IBX Smart View APIs through our Equinix Developer Portal platform. So in order to consume IBX Smart View APIs, 
you have to have you have to as a customer you have to purchase the IBX Smart View product. Once you have the product, and you will be provided access to Equinix Developer Portal. After gaining access to Equinix Developer Portal, you need to create an app in on the Equinix Developer Portal for IBX Smart View product. The app provides you with a client secret and a client ID, which are OAuth2 identifiers needed to generate the OAuth2 access tokens, which will be subsequently used to access all our REST APIs. Using the feed subscription REST API, you can subscribe to our near real-time streaming APIs, i.e. configure them, and modify or unsubscribe from them. We will talk about more on these during the demos to follow, but this slide was essentially trying to drive home the point that what are the various steps involved before you're ready to consume our REST APIs. Next, we will talk about IBX Smart View API use cases, and then we'll do a deep dive into the demos. Before we start with the demo feature, I want to talk about the entire set of the use cases or the lay of the land, if you will, that we support using IBX Smart View APIs. So this particular slide talks about the entire set of use cases that we support. So across the top of this particular slide, you'll see that the four asset categories that we support, namely electrical assets, mechanical assets, environmental sensors, and power assets. And across the first column are the different capabilities. So using asset REST API, you can get the assets that either you own or you have deployed at our various Equinix IBX locations or the Equinix infrastructure assets that, uh, that are serving your assets. Using the asset tags REST API, you get a visibility into the attributes of these assets or the various tag points as we refer to them. Using the alarms REST API, you can get a list of all active alarms or all historical alarms that have ever triggered on your assets. Using the alerts REST API, uh, you can get all act, uh, unacknowledged active alerts or all alerts that have ever triggered across all your Equinix deployments. The streaming uh, near real-time APIs, as we mentioned earlier, provide you the capability to stream the data as it is being collected in our different IBX locations. At this point in time, as we mentioned, we support collecting data across these different asset categories over eight industry protocols using push and pull message exchange pattern and then stream that data out to you over, over the private or pub public cloud asynchronous channels. The streaming alarms API streams the alarms as they are triggered, acknowledged, and cleared in the system. Streaming alerts API streams alerts as they are created and acknowledged in the IBX Smart View application. Right at the very bottom, we also are building a capability wherein we are integrating IBX Smart View alerts into customer ITSM systems. We are starting with ServiceNow. However, more on that particular use case and capabilities we'll talk about in a subsequent webinar. So this lays out the big picture, and I want to highlight the scope of this particular webinar. In this particular webinar, we will cover the scope that is outlined by this red rectangle that you see on your screen. So we will start with talking about the asset REST API. We will subsequently move into the uh, getting the asset attributes, the alarms, and we'll conclude the dev, uh, webinar by talking about streaming the asset data to our uh, to a Google pops up channel and then consuming the data from there. So this particular slide talks about a first use case wherein we will what we will do is we will go and connect uh, to Equinix. We will explore the asset APIs on the Equinix Developer Portal platform, and then we will use the Postman REST client to consume those APIs and see how they function. Before I do a deep dive into this particular use case, I want to call out a recurring theme that you will see right through these three demos that are going to follow. So we will start each demo by talking about the what the use case is and why it is important. Then we also, uh, on this particular slide, you also see the different components of the uh, logical architecture highlighted in blue, which will get triggered to support that use case. As I mentioned earlier, and I'm just gonna mention that again, 
All our REST APIs are accessible through Equinix Developer Portal in a self-service manner, and they support a three to five second response latency time for a 95th percentile, uh, from a 95th percentile perspective. So talking about this first use case, we will get the asset information and the asset tag information from the asset REST service. So let's, at this point in time, I'm gonna share my screen and move on to the Equinix developer portal, where we will see what are the capabilities offered by the REST API, asset REST API. And then you, we will use the Postman tool to consume that. So this is Equinix Developer Portal, which we briefly touched upon earlier in the webinar. I just want to call out key features uh, and then we do a deep dive into the IBX Smart View API. So Equinix Developer Portal, as I mentioned, is a key portal, is our core for all our customer APIs spreading across all our product lines. And in order to access IBX Smart View APIs, you go to this IBX Smart View tab and click on the API catalog. Once in the catalog, you'll see a section for IBX Smart View APIs. And for this use case one demo, I'm gonna focus on Assets V1 API. So these are the capabilities that are provided by the Assets V1 API. I'm gonna talk about all these capabilities and demonstrate some of them using the Postman client. So the Assets V1 list uh, get method allows you to get all the assets in a specific IBX that you as a customer have access to across the four categories that we spoke about earlier, which is the mechanical, electrical, environmental, and power. The asset V1 details provides you the attributes of the tag points of a particular asset that you can choose from the list that you got earlier. If you want to get attributes of more than one asset, you can use the post flavor of the details API to get those details. The V1 tag point affected assets uh, API endpoint provides you the ability to get the, if you provide input as the Equinix infrastructure asset, you get back what all cages, cabinets, or uh, your circuits are impacted or are being serviced by that asset. Research is, uh, is, 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 is what it is, which is basically allows you to search for a given asset using wildcard patterns. The tag point current provides you the current value of a given tag for a given asset. So if you provide the asset and the tag as an input, you get what is the current value of this one. If you want to get the current value for multiple tag points in, in one shot, you can use the post flavor of this API. And finally, using the tag point slash trending, you can provide an asset, an asset attribute and a date range and get the historical data for that asset uh, from this particular endpoint. So let me cut over to the Postman client. So as I mentioned, in order to consume the REST APIs, first of all, you need to have IBX Smart View product, you need to get access to Equinix Developer Portal, and then you create an app. The app gives you the client ID and client secret that you would need to to uh, generate the OAuth token. I have done all those prerequisite steps in preparation for this demo. So we will start with talking about the get asset list APIs. So this particular API here provides you, in, in this particular API, I'm trying to get all assets that I, as account number one, or Equinix account, have access to in my IBX CH1, which belong to category mechanical. So if I invoke this particular API, I will get all the mechanical assets that I have access to. So, and the attributes of this assets are, what is the asset ID, which is the CH1 FC.2? Which ID is this asset is in? Is it in, uh, is it under alarm or is it okay? And if it was under alarm, what was the, when was it last triggered and last cleared? So this is an example of a fan coil asset. Similarly, I have access to multiple assets, which is exhaust fans and, and the lights. If I want to get a list of electrical asset, I can use the same endpoint, and instead of passing mechanical, I can pass the classification as electrical, and I will get 
the electrical assets in back in my response. Again, the same set of attributes that we uh, looked at earlier. Now from this list of assets that I have gotten back, if I want to see all the tag points of a particular asset, I can use the get asset details API that we saw earlier. So in this one, I'm passing for this particular API, I'm passing the account number, the IBX, which asset and asset classification, whose detail I want. And if I invoke this API, I will get the attributes of the tag points for that asset. So for example, this is a CH1 LDS 11 asset. The tag point here is leak detected, or this is the tag ID. Its value is currently normal. The field here tells you the unit of measure. Since this is a volume field, which is normal or not normal, there is no unit of measure. But as we will see, as we move on to electrical assets, the system will provide you with the unit of measure value. Whether it is an alarm or not, when was this reading last read? It also provides you additional metadata about the asset as well in terms of when was this last uh, when was this asset last maintained, who is the manufacturer, equipment model number, serial number, and other things. So this in this particular example, you see that this asset here, leak detection system, has only one tag that is exposed to the customer. Let's say we want to see an example of an asset that has more than one tag point that are exposed. We can use uh, this other example wherein the we are going to pass the, the generator as the asset that we want information about. And if I invoke this, you will see this is the asset generator uh, gen one, and these are the different asset tags that are accessible to the customer. So fuel hours, this is the current value. It's in unit of measure is in hours. It's not under alarm, and this is the time when it was last read. Similarly, you have a voltage. The unit of measure is volts. The value is zero. Its alarm status is okay. And likewise, there are many other attributes to go. So this is the second API endpoint, which very basically, if you provide the asset, it gives you all the tag points for the asset back. Moving on to the third API in the asset service, which is the affected customer asset. So this API provides you, as I mentioned earlier, it provides you the capability that if you give an Equinix infrastructure asset as an input, it will return you all your cages, cabinets, and power circuits that are being serviced by that particular asset. So here I'm providing an ASTS as an input in the IBX CH1 for my account. And if I invoke this API, I will see that it will return that this particular ASTS is serving my cage BCM000 and cabinet 999 in this cage. And these are the different power circuits that are being serviced by this particular ASTS. It's a useful API to find out what all assets get impacted if a particular Equinix asset goes under alarm conditions, or for many or for a variety of use cases. Moving on to the last point of the asset service, which is the tag point trending. This particular endpoint in the asset service provides you the capability wherein you can provide input as a particular tag ID and a date range, and it gives you the historical data for that particular attribute for the date range. So here, if I invoke this particular API, you can see that it is giving me that for this particular IBX, this is the at an interval of one hour. For this particular tag ID, these are the data points and the date time when it was recorded as the historical data snapshot. So this is a useful um, functionality wherein if you want to extract data, historical data for analysis purposes or running any, uh, any, any kind of analytics on this data. So as long as you have the tag ID and the date range you know, you can extract this information. Going back to the presentation and moving on to use case two. So moving on to the second use case. So this, in this particular use case, what we will do is we will configure using the feed subscription REST API, we'll configure uh, real-time streaming asset data onto a Google Pub Sub channel. And then we will use a very simple Java client, which will connect to this Google Pub Sub channel and consume the read the data off it. And I'm using a Java client. You can use a, 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 a program of your choice in a choice of your language, and then you can consume the data from the Google Pub Sub channel. 
Essentially, the point this particular use case is going to make is that how easy it is to configure uh, an asset data stream or a power data stream to stream onto a public cloud channel and then consume data off it. Again, as you can see here in this uh, logical architecture, this, uh, the components highlighted in blue are the ones that will be leveraged to uh, fulfill this use case. And between the time the data is collected at our various Equinix locations and the time it is made available to you, it should be roughly between 30 to 60 seconds. At this point in time, I will go to Equinix Developer Portal to showcase the feed subscription service using which you can using which you can subscribe to these APIs, and then we will go to post that to, to actually create the feed. So back onto the Equinix Developer Portal, we have the feed subscription service. The feed subscription service provides us the capability to configure real streaming real-time data in a self-service manner on our on a, uh, <clears throat> asynchronous channel or a streaming channel of our choice. So let's talk about this API a bit before we do a deep dive into the demo using the Postman tool for REST client and Eclipse for consuming the data of the Google pops up channel. So feed subscription service provides you the method. So I will go in a specific order. So using the post v1 subscribe method, you can create the streaming data. So essentially this particular method accepts the IBX for which you want the asset data to be streamed and the channel on which you stream. So at this point in time, as I mentioned, we support Google pops up as the only public cloud channel with Microsoft Azure and uh, Amazon Web Services asynchronous channels are in works. So you can provide input saying, hey, as a customer, I want my data from my CH1 to be streamed onto a Google pops up channel. And this service will take care of configuring that subscription for you, dynamically provisioning a Google pops up channel and a subscription that you can then use in your code to consume the data off it. And all of this is done just by one click. Once you have created the uh, subscription, if you want to edit the subscription, you can use the put uh, uh, v1 subscribe API. The put API allows you to update the existing subscription. So the use case would be, let's say I've created an asset data stream for my IBX CH1. And now I want to add the capability to stream data for my IBX CH2 onto the same Google Pub Sub channel. I can use the put method to augment the existing streams. If you want to see what all subscriptions you have created, you can use the v1 subscribe get method, and this returns you all these current subscriptions. And using the v1 subscribe delete method, you can delete your existing subscription and uh, get rid of the Google pops up topic that is used for, uh, that, that you initially provisioned using the post method. So now I will move on to my Postman client and will show you these things in action. So first of all, we will start by a get subscription method. And the reason that I'm starting with get is to showcase that at this point in time, there are no subscription that are created. And I will be using an Eclipse client here to basically consume this data. So if I start my Eclipse client at this point in time, it should start, but it is not consuming any data. There is no data being streamed at this point in time. I'm going to stop it. Now using the post subscription method, as I alluded to earlier, I'm going to create an asset data stream for my account number one for IBX CH1. So this is going to tell the system that I want all my asset attributes that I have visibility to, to be streamed to me on a Google pops up channel for IBX CH1. So if I send this request, the system will dynamically provision the Google Pops of topic. It will create the stream and all the necessary plumbing that needs to go in the background for the data. So you got that for IBX CH1, the stream is configured. This is your subscri unique subscription ID. And this is your Google Pops up subscription detail that you have to use in your client that you write to read the data off it. So I have configured the uh, Google conf uh, my Java client to read off this particular subscription. 
And now if I start my Java client, you will see the data being streamed and being read of the channel. There you go. So you can see that the real-time data is being streamed on the Google PubSub channel for IBX CH1. And this particular client is reading of that Google PubSub channel and just printing it out. I'd like to take a moment to show what all attributes we stream. So these are the attributes that you see that are being streamed. So we stream JSON document. Here we are just printing it out in a simple textual format, but we are essentially streaming JSON documents, which has the value of the tag ID. What is the value getting that is being streamed? What is the display name of the tag on your IBX Smart View portal, if you see that? What is the unit of measure of this value, if there is any? Is it under alarm or not? When was this last read? So these are the key attributes of a particular tag point that is being streamed on this uh, Google Pops of channel. I will go back to my uh, feed subscription service. And I will, at this point in time, I will use the get method again. This time around, it should show me that I am consuming data or I am streaming data uh, as a data for IBX CH1. So if I invoke this API again, now I see that for asset data for IBX CH1 is being streamed on my Google pops up channel. And here are the details of the subscription that I can use to consume the data. If I now want to delete the subscription, I can use the delete subscription service. So this service, if I invoke, my streaming here should have stopped, as you can see has stopped. So no more data is being streamed now. The service dynamically unsubscribes a stream from the Google Pub Sub channel and removes the subscription off it. At this point in time, I will stop and go back to my presentation for moving on to use case three. So use case three, which is our final use case in, as part of this pre webinar, talks about leveraging alarms REST API to get either all alarms that have ever triggered across all your Equinix deployments or get a list of currently active alarms across all your Equinix deployments. Again, alarms REST API is accessible through Equinix developer portal the 95th percentile response time lies somewhere between three to five seconds. And this particular logical diagram shows you the components that trigger to support this particular use case. We'll move to Equinix Developer Portal to talk about the capabilities of the Alarm APIs. So this is the alarms API, which has offers just one endpoint, which is the smart view slash alarms. And this allows you to get all active alarms or all historical alarms just by the change of a parameter, which we will see shortly in our demo. So using the Postman tool as uh, trying to invoke the alarm API. So here I'm providing input saying for my account, give me all alarms. And since it's a, like a, it's, it's gonna be a huge data set, I'm asking it to sort by different parameters, start with zero, which is the first page, give me 20 results per page and which page I'm talking about. So if I invoke this particular REST API, I get all alarms across all my Equinix deployments. So reading one alarm here, you'll see that this alarm is on CH2 for my account on the asset ID leak detection system six, this is the asset, the asset type is a leak detection system. The asset classification is it's a mechanical category asset. The condition is alarm, it's a high alarm. Status equal to true indicates that this alarm is currently active and not been cleared. The act equal to false means that the operations team at Equinix location has not yet acknowledged this alarm. So this is still to be acknowledged. Which tag is causing alarm, which is the leak detected tag. Uh, and what time this alarm triggered and what time it got processed, and what time the normal process. So time normal process is zero because it has not yet come back to normal. 
once it comes back to normal, you'll see this value populated here. So this is the uh, one particular alarm condition, alarm setup. There are many other alarms following the exact same pattern. And if you scroll down, it gives you that you have a total of 1963 alarms across all your Econix deployments that have ever triggered. So, so these are all the three use cases that I wanted to cover. The many other use cases that you'll see in the demo uh, or that you saw in the overall use case slide, we'll have subsequent webinars to talk about that. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through our different channels that are listed here on this uh, particular slide and connect with us and see how we can help you getting, getting unprecedented visibility into your co-location footprint using IBX Smart View APIs. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, Klaus, at this point in time, I'd like to hand it back to you. Very good. Thank you so much, Tivesh. And I want to thank you, our audience, for again, taking time to joining us today. Uh, also, thanks, Michael and our experts on the panel. We have no more questions. Uh, so all questions have been answered. And again, thanks, Tivesh, for walking us through with that. Uh, again, let me point out one more time, all the resources that you see on this slide are also part of the resource list as part of the uh, portal here. So please take advantage of those. And with that, I will conclude. And that concludes our today's webinar. Thank you.